Welcome back to another episode of our podcast. This is Si Wing Yi, and my co-host is Julie. How are you, Julie? I'm fine. Good morning, Si Wing. How are you? Very good. Julie is a member of our real estate network, our investment club. Julie is a representation of all our members, several thousand members within our network. Most of our members have not taken any action for whatever reasons, and then some over the years have taken action and some have already purchased several properties and they're going through the journey, they're going through some challenges and what have you. And some newbies are who are contemplating taking action. Uh, and, and however, a lot of things are getting in the way. Julie, again, is a great representation because she herself have been a newbie for many years and just only three years ago, Julie and her husband, Mark, has purchased a total of six cash flow rental properties. We're not going to get into the details. We have discussed that uh, a number of times on our previous yeah. podcast, but great job, Julie. And Je thank you for representation. Re representing. Re <laughs> yeah, re representing all those mom and pop Literally. out there just trying to make mm -hmm. the financial situation better by investing in turnkey, uh, turnkey mm -hmm. out-of-state remote uh, cash flow rental properties. Absolutely. All right, so Perfect. Without further ado, let me go ahead and go over our module. This is a current article from Redfin. Redfin is one of the most credible sources around housing market updates and what have you. So I just want to take a step back and just go over the big picture. This kind of information applies to current primary home buyers, first time home buyers, only occupied home buyers, and lastly, real estate investors who who need to be continue to be educated about about investment opportunities, such as what we do. So without further ado, let's go over the headline. Riffin headline is published just July the 3rd. <laughs> yeah, and the headline is U.S. home prices hit new all-time high. It just resonate with you and I, Julie, of all the uh, doom and gloom negative headlines that's, mm -hmm. that's been rampant in uh, social media, mm -hmm. in the uh, Instagram and TikTok and YouTube videos and mainstream media. Mm -hmm. Everybody is just uh, in doom and gloom. They are pushed by the crash bros, porn videos, and the doomers out there who ch whom are manipulating the data and just, mm -hmm. just causing so many so much chaos in the housing market and and what have you but and what you Julie what you and I try to show are credible data just we we'll give right. you a we we'll give you unbiased information so you guys out there can make an informed decision right whether to buy or not your primary home whether buy or not your investment properties am i right <laughs> oh absolutely absolutely and i'm just looking at that they're saying an all time high for those of us that are already in the market, I mean, that, that already own investment property, that's exciting news for us. Oh, oh, absolutely. People like yourself, you know, who who have taken action, mm -hmm. have a nice real estate portfolio. You just sit tight and let the mm -hmm. market come do the work for you. Absolutely. You do, uh, do uh, You already done the heavy lifting when you took mm -hmm. action to buy those six rental properties. And that's true. That's now true. you just sit tight, relax, and uh, let the returns and... Uh, let the wealth build for you over time, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's go over the reference situation. So let's real quick, this will be a, a mere 15 minute max. Mm -hmm. Yeah, according to Mortgage News Daily, which is the primary source uh, that I use for daily mortgage updates, currently it's a little bit over 7%, uh, mm -hmm. 7 7.13, according to Mortgage News Daily. For th This is a for primary home buyer interest rate. Investors play, pay a little bit more, which is always the case. Uh, let me go over uh, what are some of the recent short-term trends. Uh, mortgage uh, application has been down 12% uh, from a week ago, and uh, uh, Riffin Home Buyers Index also down 17%. Again, the continued elevated mortgage rate has caused the demand to uh, to decrease uh, just a little bit from a from a month earlier. Let me see key. Let's go over key housing market data. I, I did some yellow highlighting. Once again, medium sales price is almost four hundred thousand dollars nationwide. I know real estate is very local. In fact, it's very hyper local. So every right. market, every neighborhood in the country is. Very different. I'm very reluctant to report the so-called national realism market because there's mm -hmm. no there's no such thing. But right. 
But for purpose of presenting, I have to use the, the sources that are yeah. available to us uh, at this moment. In this case, uh, Redfin. Medium price, again, much to a lot of people's uh, dislike, especially the doomers, the, the, uh, the crash bros. <laughs> Uh, medium housing prices continue to go at at a hard time, all time high. Even though the mortgage rate two and a half years ago, twenty twenty one, about three percent, and uh, it's lower. Then, yeah, then it went. Yeah, no, it went all the way up to eight percent last October twenty twenty three, and now back to seven percent. And yet, the market, the recent market, is so resilient. And uh, again, we keep seeing this narrative: home prices continue to go up now. He's breaking all kinds of records. Now he's at all time high. So, you have any quick comments about that, Julie? <laughs> it's, just, it's just amazing that it doesn't really matter what the interest rates are doing. Um, people are still going to continue to buy. And again, if you're already in, that's great. But if you haven't gotten in, it's a little more challenging, but I think there's still opportunities out there for you. That's right. Whether you're, if, if you're a primary home buyer or first time home buyer or real estate investors, really just if you have the financial means available to do, if you have a good cash reserve, uh, if this is uh, obtaining shelter is important to you, then it's never really a wrong time to buy, right? Very good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Everything we see is, and this is very troubling trend right here, medium monthly mortgage payment, which is nationwide, which is right. almost $2,800 based on 6.86%. Now the mortgage rate is around the low sevens. Mm -hmm. Again, people with almost perfect credit with a, have a very good financial position, they, mm -hmm. they can get this mortgage rate. So if you have a less than stellar credit and what have you, you could be paying higher than, than this 7% mortgage rate. Mm -hmm. So nevertheless, the medium monthly mortgage has gone skyrocketed over the past few years. We can go over that momentarily mm -hmm. and look at the, the three-year trend, but uh, still, the medium monthly mortgage payment has set an all-time high just a few weeks ago. All-time mm -hmm. high monthly mortgage. So that means affordability uh, is the uh, home affordability is the lowest in the past four decades, right? Wow. See, that's why people stay on the sidelines for the past three years. They are part of the people that continue to be priced out of the housing market. That's true. And they could be stay on the sidelines if they keep on have this. We can again if you can afford to buy, and if, if you live, if you want to live at your house for the long term, then you might as well go ahead and do it, right? So there's right. no no reason to wait, and then you cannot time the market. Exactly, exactly. I think it's like you always say, it's time in the market, not trying to time the market. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, Julie. Exactly. Yeah, very important distinction. So mm -hmm. now this highlight. In fact, this metric is the most important of all. We talk about fundamentals of real estate. Fundamentals of uh, everything is, is supply and demand, right? Mm -hmm. People keep missing this out. They just, how could anybody ignore this? The most important metrics in, in the, today's uh, economy, uh, not just real estate, in, in that four to five months of supply of uh, housing inventory is considered a balanced, healthy, market mm. with a, yeah, with a lower number indicating a seller's market. So with that in mind, today's, according to Riffin, mm -hmm. uh, the month of supply of inventory is 3.3%. Mm -hmm. For any how crash bros out there that always talk about crash, mm -hmm. they, they continue to be wrong because when you have this very low inventory supply, mm -hmm. you put pressure to on home prices to go up. Right. So, uh, this is so clear to me. People does not understand about the fundamentals that they're missing out, right? Absolutely. Yeah, but that is good. that's good news for sellers, but it does make it a little challenging for those trying to get into the market to buy. Yeah, yeah Julie, are you, we, you and I went through that and, and there's a mainstream media. Look, we have a the, the inventory, the supply, which could be a problematic for years to come, in my opinion, because we are at the lock-in effect. The sellers, the resellers, the sellers out there are sitting on a historically low mortgage. They are, right. they are, they are very com comfortable right. with the mortgages, right? Yeah, and uh, then they're not going to go anywhere. Sell and go where? Pay double the price for a new mortgage, so they're not going anywhere. <laughs> exactly, exactly. As a result, I feel that we can have a, 
I know there are some markets allegedly have a have much higher inventory than year over year, but but still, I feel that we can have a shortage of home to purchase for the next decade to come. That that is mm. that, that is my belief, and and what we'll, we'll, remains to be seen. Remains to be seen for, for for the next ten years. There will be a, 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 a supply and demand issue. There will be less than su uh, available supply because of the reasons you just, we just, you and I just discussed. These other metrics are really nothing that sticks out. The medium days on a market is 32 days, which is historically average. So that's good. And average sale to list price is almost 98%. So the closing sale is 2% less than the original list price, which is in line with the his historical mm -hmm, data. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go over depend the specific markets. People can read it on their own, but let's go over the, the graph. Okay. This graph is clearly tells a story. The medium sales price has been up almost 5% year over year. What does it mm. mean? That means housing prices are going higher. Very clear. The beginning of the year, we are like right in the, right here. And then but due to the typically seasonality, the strong spring buying season with more uh, demand than, than supply, we think a mini bidding war, mini multiple offer situation mm -hmm. for the first six months has driving the price has up from the mid 300s to almost four hundred thousand dollars as of June, wow. as of June thirtieth, twenty twenty four, right? Yeah. And again, giving all this. Look at the, when the pandemic began back in 2021, look at, at the beginning of 2021, the, the medium price nationwide is right at 300,000. Mm -hmm. Now it's at 400,000. Unbelievable. You see that when the mortgage rate were approximately 3% back in 2021, look at the tremendous skyrocketing of home mm -hmm. prices nationwide. So you see this is a big, huge gap from 2021 yeah. to uh, 2022 right here. Mm -hmm. Talking 30, 40, 50% appreciation in just one year, which is insane. That is, okay? that's amazing. Wow. Absolutely amazing. And lucky for you and I, we, we took the plunge, you and I, and a number of our investors that I helped with within our mm -hmm. network, the handful that took the pl plunge in, during this time period, we, you know, we made out like a bandit, right? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And the people that, that are scared or fearful, whatever. They watch the crash bros, they listen to the doomers, they sit on the sideline and they wonder what happens, right? Yes. But yeah, it's pretty right. sad. Yeah, mm -hmm. although, yeah. And then 2022, 2023, we have some, some little bit of corruption in, in the market. Of course, when you see this graph, yeah, every year is a seasonality. The first six months, mm -hmm. we always see spring buying season will ramp up right. and then to, toward the second half of the of each year on a sure. historical basis the prices uh, uh you Makes know sense. gradually go down a little bit because the people are focusing on other things right like right now people focus right. on vacation then yeah. the coming winter time people are not moving anymore they want to stay kids put back to school the kids are back in school so no one's moving <laughs> yeah so mm -hmm. yeah exactly as you can see the graph but the, the the following year, at the beginning of the year, same thing. thing, and then and then of course. But anyway, the big picture is there were no crash, and uh, like a lot of people want to talk about it. All the crash bros, they just want to, they just want to click bait, and uh, they want to uh, get subscriptions. And when you prey on fears, people are gravitate towards this negativity. So uh, those those YouTube influencers out there, they are they have no morals and they they have they provide such negative headlines and they cause a lot of people to be paralyzed with fear and and people are staying on the sidelines because the crash bros give them permission to stay on the sidelines right. and do nothing exactly and that's very sad anyway that's another story we can talk all day about the the brainwashing and going on with the negative headlines right. to contents uh mm -hmm. uh influencers out there they are doing mm -hmm. people a disservice but uh, anyway but mm -hmm. nevertheless, in this past four years, houses continue to go up. I don't know. I don't know what other data there's out there that are uh, yeah. discreditable that this is a signal that mm -hmm. waiting is just does not make any sense. Right. 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 As I'm looking at these these metrics, it's like you could almost call this video. The numbers don't lie because the bottom line is 
Those are factual numbers. They're not made up numbers. They're research numbers and, and they're consistent. So even if you were to get in now, you see how the, the medium high is whatever, 397,000, don't be discouraged. Because if you get in now, five years from now, you'll be in a better position anyway. Even though that number looks high, it's better to try to get in as soon as you can and then ride the wave. Yep. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Medium asking price, similar every year goes, but inflation alone will cause home prices to go up naturally. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is a very troubling trend, as we see here, for those first time home buyers, for those people right. trying to get in the market. Look at this. When the pandemic began back four years ago, three and a half years ago, how time flies, the, the monthly mortgage payment on an average home price at that time were like, as you can see right here, were approximately like $1,300 or whatever, $1,400 mm -hmm. right here at the beginning of 2021. Mm -hmm. And then because of the skyrocketing home prices in the past few years and the uh, elevated mortgage rate continued to go up, you mm -hmm. look at the monthly mortgage from 2021 to, 20, to 2022 have increased from, from around 1300 nationwide to over here, like 20, 2300, right? Then from 2022 to 2023, the average monthly payment on a medium price of a home we're like 2,500 right here. Wow. And then today, June 30th, 2024, not today, but the date of this, this data. The That's average a big difference. Yeah. $2,749,000 per month, right. even at a 6.8%. Right now, 7.1% or what have you. So it'll be higher not right now right. compared to this. Furthermore, this is just talk about, this is just a principal and interest. If you add on to you the monthly mortgage tax, property taxes, and the, the insurance, as insurance has in many areas of the country, not just the Atlanta coast, not just Florida, not just the Gulf Coast in, in Gulf of Mexico, many areas of the country, the insurance company are raising their premium on yes. homeowners. So we talk about, when you talk about high, all time high in monthly mortgage payments yes. for the average folks out there, right. plus a higher property taxes year over year continually, mm -hmm. depending on what where you live, and then higher insurance costs on your uh, homeowner's insurance, and then the maintenance and upkeep of uh, mm -hmm. cost of maintaining your home. Right. No wonder we have a affordable home affordability, the the lowest ever in the past four decades. Right. Wow, that's deep. That's yeah. amazing. That's the difference is just amazing. Gosh, yeah, that, that, and that can be a little bit of a challenge for those that are trying to get into the market now, but they're better now than never. Yeah, high sight is 2020, four years ago. I could have, should have, would have. Right. But the, the wealth gap is really is a very a far apart between the wealthy and the poor. So mm -hmm. there's no more middle class. Uh, there's, no right. more, there's no more middle class uh, America because look at this. The mortgage payment has... And it has increased 100% mm -hmm. average monthly mortgage yeah. Uh, yeah. In, a, in a mere three and a half years. This is absolutely mind boggling, Julie. Mm -hmm. That is, it is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the good part of it is the, a lot of people are entering the rental pool. This means that the renters nation is the highest ever in history of America, in my opinion. And as a result, as landlords, you and I yes. and, and our network, we we are gonna we profit more more from this uh, market, this challenging market than ever before. So it, it is a good thing. It's a right. good thing for landlords because you can have more renter uh, who should rent your home. You can if you buy in a good locations, and then you can have a, a cash flow. And we predict because there's so many people entering the rental pool, we're gonna raise our rent. Uh, systematically for a number of years to come. It's all right. good for landlords, am I right? <laughs> exactly. That's very true. Uh -huh. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. As we head toward the second half of the year, as always, the demand and and supply of homes will be will decrease as a result. The pending sales, hell, sales about to close escrow is, is low. Look at this year, 2024, the pending sales compared to the last three years has is, is lower. So mm -hmm. that means... We are, uh, a lot of experts will agree that we are in a in historic 
transactions crash. You know, there's a distinction. There's a distinction between housing crash and a transaction crash. That, that means because there's so few homes out there available mm -hmm. in, the in the past few years, including this year, there's less sales than ever in history in the past twenty something years. So we have a transaction crash. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that does make yeah. sense. That yeah. Makes sense. No, mm -hmm. no, the sellers are, most sellers are not selling. They are staying put. They have a lock-in right. effect. That and, makes sense. And the new builders, they're trying to build more new homes, but the new homes, is they're not building new homes fast enough to offset the lack of resale homes out there to buy. That, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And, wow. Yeah. And again, new listings of homes year over year has increased 10%. But it's still below 2020, 2022, and 2021, and, okay. uh, and way below the pre-pandemic back in 2019 and prior. Mm -hmm. So okay. new, new listings, although they have gone up year over year, they're still below historical benchmark. Okay, right. Not enough right. homes are being listed for the opportunity mm -hmm. for to buy. Interesting. Okay. Yep, yep. Supply, demand is still greater than supply. We still have... A lot of people that uh, want to buy that have the mean, financial means to buy, but there's just mm -hmm. not enough houses uh, to out there uh, to pick and choose. Wow! Okay, amazing. So, yeah, some people use this this particular data to to promote their negative headlines, meaning active listings of homes for sale is up eighteen percent year over year. People mm -hmm. think up eighteen percent. Wow, we have almost one million homes for sale dated uh, June uh, in the middle of this year. Mm -hmm. Way way up than last year, and way up higher than the past three years. Yet some of those crash bros and doomers, they're gonna continue to promote videos stating, "Oh, there's so many homes are coming into the market in terms of active listings oh. year, over, year over year." When you have more inventory and the less demand, because a higher mortgage rate is gonna this pendulum is gonna crash the housing market. But what the doom and gloomers fail to uh, provide real transparent data is such that even though the after listings has almost skyrocketed, if you call it that, uh, from year mm -hmm. over year at one, you know, almost 1 million, still below the pre-pandemic level of 1.2, 1.3 million on a healthy market situation, right? I see. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Julie, I don't mind providing this kind of data, Redfin or CoreLogic or Realtors.com. And in, in the future, Julie, you and I are going to do a co-hosting more of this kind of data. I know we have not talked about this kind of education that much, but we right. will. And he, here's the frustration I'm experiencing. All those doomers out there, all, all those negative headlines, when they produce this kind of educational house, uh, real estate videos, mm -hmm. they always compare information from one year to uh, uh, this current year to a, a year ago or, or right now to nine months ago or right, or, or right now to three, year, uh, three years ago because and it's, this kind of short-term comparison is not a game changer. Mm -hmm. What I mean it doesn't that, need to be the full picture either. Yeah, you have to have a more historical perspective, more right, of right. higher level, longer term uh, data to to compare apple to apple. That makes sense. Yeah. Because what has gone through in the pandemic is a uh, the pandemic situation is a once in a lifetime anomaly. Anomaly. What right. I mean by that, past four years is it has it, we have never experienced this in, within our lifetime. True. Within True anybody's that. lifetime, the lifetime of our parents as well. Yeah. That's so true. For the negative headlines out there, compare, they, they put us in the four year prison, that four year mm -hmm. housing prison. That means mm -hmm. uh, the doom and gloomers, to, to man they, they manipulate the data. And, right. And they always compare short term comparison. Compare this year to uh, 18 months ago, right. uh, this month to uh, eight and a half months ago. And you see some like uh, double digit changes, like uh, breaking or uh, negative. Mm -hmm. Oh, everything is coming, is, is crashing. They manipulate the data, but they, it's just that in in order to be realistic, to be transparent, to be honest, you have to you have to go past before the pandemic. You have to compare data, all these kind of new listings, transactions, and uh, all these kind of data we have just gone over uh -huh. through a four, five, six, seven, ten year, twenty year Apple to Apple data comparison, right? Mm -hmm. so, Absolutely, so, that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. It's yeah, always so. better to, like I said, look at the bigger picture. Don't look at a little short, tiny window because mm -hmm. it's not apples to apples, like you said. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, look at, at the when the pandemic began, when the when the when historical low mortgage back in 2021, three percent mortgage, mm -hmm. and there's just so many people buying multiple offer situations. At that time, we were like less than two months supply of inventory back in 21. Mm -hmm. and, okay. And two point five months of inventory back in 2022, and then uh, a little bit less than three months of inventory at, at last year, and now so-called quote end quote skyrocketed and, to three point three months of inventory. <laughs> And during a, a mid, mid year 2024, and people panicking in all those negative headlines, mm -hmm. going to say, oh, inventory have skyrocketed from 50 to 75%. percent It's just mm -hmm. a scary headline. And yet we are still in a seller's market. The sellers right. still dictate the housing market. And mm -hmm. it, it is below four to six months. It's a below, it's not even a healthy market. It's a still a, a market where we still, in, in many markets and country, even as we speak, there are three or four buyers for every for every homes that are, are in the market. Yeah, so we're still getting bidding wars in, in many yeah. parts of the country. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the, the the pent up demand is still greater than the limited supply out there, and as right. as confirmed by this a mere three point three month supply of inventory. Right. Yeah, you have to take it. You have to take uh -huh. it from a, from a good perspective. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so as I conclude this, let's quickly go through the okay. rest of the, of the graph. Home sold in a medium of 32 days. Not just pretty normal, even though 32 days is higher than the past three years. Mm -hmm. But prior three years, home homes get get sold within hours, not days. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Back in uh, 2021. Anyway, so the rest of this data, nothing that screams disturbance, mm -hmm. nothing like that. 32% mm -hmm. of homes sold. Above list price, that means uh, one third of the homes are sold above list price. So, which is right. which is fine. And so, I think average home sold a mere one percent less than the initial offering price. So, okay. again, nothing to to be concerned about. Anyway, anyway, my takeaway is so my takeaway is we we plugging along. There's no impending doom and gloom situation. It's just the mortgage rate is still going to stay elevated for the remaining this year, in my opinion. It's going to be at the lowest to, uh, by, by the end of this year with the election. Who knows? Well, we could come down to 6.5% mortgage rate, but we, we may not. Mortgage rate is hard to predict. But yes. even, even 2025, the Federal Reserve, they oh, they did not even do any rate cuts this year, 2024, mm -hmm. the you know, Federal mm -hmm. Reserve, like right. like they plan to next year, maybe two, two rate cut for 2025, who knows, but for anybody expect the mortgage rate to come down below 6% anytime soon, oh, they, yeah. it's not going to, I don't think it's going to happen, but no right. one have a crystal ball, but uh, that's true. Yeah. My takeaway is that the market is going through so in the bumps up and down, nothing unique. It's just some sort of slight corrections in certain market in the, in the US, which is fine. But uh, for the most part, things are almost normal, almost healthy. There's some elements of a buyer's market in some market. So there are opportunities, especially as a real estate investor, that something that we, you and I uh, right. get into. So this mm -hmm. amazing to capitalize on investment opportunities. In Absolutely. And that's really the bottom line. You just, I think the consistency of the market shows that if you invested four years ago or if you invest today, you're still going to realize that consistency over time. I think that's the important thing. Don't get scared away by the numbers or the, where you talked about the mortgages are higher or the, the what you're paying per month is higher. Just get in. Figure out what your goal is. Get in and then ride. Like I said earlier, ride the wave because it's going to be consistent over time. That's right. That's right. Yep. History. History are, is, is good for long-term uh, buyers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Anyway, with that said, before we let you guys go, if you receive any value whatsoever from this podcast, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I truly need more subscribers, as you can tell. <laughs> but it's okay. I enjoy what we're doing and we, we tell the truth. We are not clickbait. We are not negative headline. Otherwise, we would get more subscribers, to be honest. So Exactly. You and I, we have ethics. We have ethics right. and we have a moral compass that we would not Important. cross. We would not cross the line for the sake of a clickbait and monetizing our channel. Absolutely. Like Absolutely. other doom and gloomers, click crash bros out yeah. there that they have no conscience. That's right. 
That's right. Absolutely. This is good. This has been yeah, great. We provide true content, realistic, down to earth, real data, not manipulative, not not misleading. At the end right. of the day, you and I, we can sleep well at night knowing that we're impacting people positively. Instead of crash folks out there, they show so much doom and gloom every single day and right. cause people to, to stay on the sidelines, which is very tragic and very sad. Yes, <laughs> yes. it is. Yes. Listen, yeah, find the truth and, and then just go after whatever your goal is. Really, that's the bottom line. And you got to set a goal and then you got to go after it. Get the right information, get the right support and go after it. Yeah, absolutely, Julie. Thank you so much, Julie. Great, Thank uh, you. Yeah, great assistance. And uh, oh, one more thing. If you, can, if you have not already done so, please uh, subscribe to our our newsletter at the, our, my website. Enter my website and put your email on there. You will receive, you become a free member of our mm -hmm. organization. We talk about investing, all kinds of free educational contents can come into your email on pretty much on a daily basis. So you can become a true wealth builder through real estate investing. All right. So with that, right. thank you for watching. Have a nice day. I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.